Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over some tin cans and I'm kind of excited about this one because I've been wanting to make one of the things that I'm making on here for a while. This is just a basket, obviously, that um, when I do my open house for Christmas in uh, October 20, on October 21st, um, we will have door prizes all day long. And so I need to make up some of these. And my sister has been working on some lavender infused honey. And if you've never tried this, oh my goodness, it is so good. And, um, and then, um, so I'm going to use that in this. And this is going to be a lavender themed basket. And this is a candle. She used to make candles. This is one that we had left over. That is lavender. And this is a little lavender sachet that she made on a previous video. I'll link that one in the description. Uh, but, and then I decided later to add a little um, plant marker that had some lavender decoupage on it. So, um, I thought about using this little bunch of uh, faux flowers, but I decide in the end not to, not to do that. I just couldn't make it look right, and uh, if you bought honey recently, local honey, uh, it is not cheap at all. So, by the time I put the honey and the, and the candle and um and then the lavender sachet thing i think this will be a nice enough door prize and i happen to have a little uh, a couple of little doilies that would go well with this anyway so i just put that to kind of line it first and then i just kind of arrange those so that you could see them all and then i'm just going to wrap them in uh, basket wrap and then i attach some faux lavender at the top and um add a hang tag and this is that little plant marker that i decided to add in so again this will be one of my door prizes when i have my open house i got a visit yesterday from a sweet viewer her name was kim and she's from uh actually tennessee but she's from nashville tennessee and she and her daughter came by for a visit, and I was just really grateful to get to meet her. She was a really sweet lady. Anytime that you know you're going to be in the area and going to be stopping by, if you'll let me know a few days ahead of time, then um, I like to make sure that I have a gift for you. And uh, on occasion, I've even been able to free up enough time, if I know ahead of time, uh, to go uh, for coffee with you or uh, even to lunch. So anytime you know ahead of time, please let me know. Okay, this is the project that I've been wanting to do. And I'm going to just let you have, give you a minute to guess first uh, what we're going to be making here. And you may already know, but when I put this last one on, I think most of you will know. So this is going to be a snowman. And I've seen these on Pinterest, and I just really like them. The one I saw was a two-tiered snowman uh, counting the head, and I felt like it needed more. So, although I did love the look of the one that I saw. But again, I think I'll add another can, but isn't he just so cute? So, I'm going to glue these three together. Uh, my friend Joyce brought me a bunch of cans, and she brought me some large vegetable cans and some coffee cans, and these are going to be perfect for this snowman. So I'm just gluing these together with some tight bond glue. Uh, E6000 would probably work even better, but I just happen to be out. But I'm leaving some space to put some hot glue so that I'll have some immediate hold as well. So I glued those three together, and then I felt like he needed a hat, obviously. So uh, instead of using that top one as the hat, I used a smaller can. And I started to use this circle and decided that I wanted to use a large can lid. And so that's what I'm using for the top. So I glued that all together, and then I took it, the whole thing outside and spray painted it black. And then I used some Dixie Bell Crackle Medium. Now you could use just regular Elmer's glue on this um, or even Mod Podge, but um, 
the crackle medium from Dixie Bell, I feel like is just a really good product and it just produces plenty of crackle. So, and if you let it dry too long, it still works. Where if you use Elmer's glue and let it dry too long, then you don't get uh, many cracks, if any. So this is the crackle that I got. I went over this with one heavy coat of the color buttercream and and then let that dry and that's the crackle. And now this is the product. It's also a Dixie Belle product called Van Dyke Brown Glaze. And I'm going over this because I want it to uh, have more of an aged look. I'm using buttercream so it's not stark white but I still want some variation in the color so that it looks more aged. So that's how I um, got this to look aged. And I'm just drying it off with a paper towel. And then once I got this finished, uh, then I just took a drill and drilled some holes in the sides for the arms. And then I went out in the yard and picked up some twigs that, um, had the little end that would look like the hand and then I just glued those into those holes and I had I glued it to where one was one arm was up and the other one was slightly down and then I tore a piece of uh, fabric uh, to use as the scarf and just tied that around the neck and then I cut some pieces of uh, coffee stained tea towel, uh, just some little bitty squares that I could glue underneath where I want to add my buttons. And that does a couple of things. Um, the buttons don't glue that well to cans, I guess because it's just two hard surfaces. Um, but so I just glued that cloth on there first and it helps it stay, but it also adds uh, some extra character and some more dimension to it. And I just think it gives it more of a prim primitive look. But I'm really loving making these snowmen. I think they're really fun to create and I'll probably be making some more if I can find enough large cans, but these would also be very pretty done in smaller cans. I think the trick is just getting the right cans uh, with each other. So once I got these buttons glued on, then I took some of that same tea towel fabric and uh, tore a little strip to glue around the um, hat. And then I added some faux greenery on the hat and um, some little pine cones and a few berries. And then um, I added a face. So I just painted with the color terracotta, uh, and that's a Dixie Bell color, uh, a little carrot-shaped nose on him. And then, um, and then I just drew the eyes with some dots of black, and the same thing with the mouth. I just made the mouth with some dots. And then, um, and then once I got that done, then um, I added a little twinkle in his eye with some white. And then I took that same white and went across the top of his nose to kind of highlight that. But snowman faces are very, very simple to do. And it, I like to see all different types. For some reason, I think that the snowmen that have the dots for the mouth are a little more primitive looking and that's why I wanted to do that one here. And I just do a little line for the eyebrows. And then here I'm just putting that little twinkle in his eye and some highlighting to the top of the nose. So now um, I decided to add a faux snow to it so what i did was i took some joint compound and a brush and i just dabbed the brush on the top of the hat and around the top of the brim and even along the tops of the arms and the tops of the other cans and just to kind of make it look like snow had settled on it in places now when this dries i'm going to take uh, 
I'm gonna go over it just the snow part with some clear coat uh, or probably some glue or Mod Podge and then sprinkle some salt over the top of it just to give it some texture. I thought about adding some opalescent shimmery glitter to it, but I decided that I didn't really want that look. I, I felt like that might take away from the primitive look of it. And other than that, all I had at the shop today was salt, so that's what I end up using. So he's almost finished here. Um, again, I add some of this to the tops of the arms and the other cans, but then I decided that I wanted to make a um, broom to go in his hand. So I took some straw and uh, made sure that I had plenty together here. And then I put a little hot glue in the center of the top that I just cut off. And then I shoved a stick that I found in the yard down inside that. And just kind of held it there a minute to make it stay good. And then I wrapped some jutes uh, several times around the top of this and tied it off. And then, uh, and then I cut the bottom of the straw to the length that it needed to be and that's the that's an easy way to make a little primitive broom and then i just glued that in his hand and um and then that's all that i did on my snowman and here is him complete and now the next item that i'm going to make is a little house from one of the larger cans so I, I took one large can and I went over a, it with a light coat of the joint compound and I just took a spatula and rubbed that all over the, the can and then once that dried I put a second coat on it and uh, then it kind of gave the can a stucco look. And to make the door, I took some clay and I just kind of rolled it out and cut the shape of the door. And then I took, um, I took a little popsicle stick and just laid the edge of it down and indented, made those little indenten, indentions to look like boards. And then I just glued that on. And here I am, instead of actually painting it, I took some of my Van Dyke Brown Glaze and just kind of brushed that on. And that gave it the look of wood. Now I had a mold for the uh, windows, but I didn't have one for a large enough door. And that's why I decided to use this. But um, the molds that I used, um, I will add that in the description, but I just used some hot glue in them and made my molds that way, and then I painted them. Now here I spray painted them just with a color that I had that I don't use much because I just wanted it, my other paint to stick well. So then I went over these with two coats of the color buttercream, and that will be my windows. And then I'm using this trim mold that I have to trim out around the door. So I'll trim with this piece of trim here that I'm making. I will trim down the sides of the door. And then the one on the end there, I'll just do the center of it. And that's what I'll use to uh, glue around the top of the door. Now I can't use resin in these. I could use clay, but I'm just using hot glue because I'm kind of in a hurry here. And um, I can't use resin because it will harden and then you can't shape it. So with the hot glue, it will be flexible and I can wrap it around that arch of, at the top of the door. Now I could have done these windows in resin but um, I just had my hot glue going and just decided to do them all in hot glue since they're gonna be painted anyway. Now, my husband ended up with some very old uh, light covers from a garage. And uh, so I've used a couple of those in, on different other projects, but I have a couple left. So I'm gonna use a, one of those uh, on the top of this birdhouse as the roof 
I keep calling it a birdhouse. It's not a birdhouse. It's just going to be a little house. And this house could be used, uh, if you clear coated it really well, it could be used maybe as a fairy house. But I just am making it for decor. And you could add a little wreath to it and use it for um, Christmas decor. You could um, make a Christmas village with different size cans. And that would be really neat. And I'm just using some scrapbook paper behind this window. And then once this dries, I'm going to go over it with uh, a shiny clear coat uh, just to make it look more like a window. But I also have some shutters that go with these windows. And I'm going to paint those a really soft green and add those on. Now I'm using hot glue here. Um, if, you're, if you were going to use this outside, this is not one that I'm going to sell. This is just one that I'm kind of practicing on. Uh, but if I were going to sell this one and it were going to be used outside as like maybe a fairy house, I would glue it with, um, with some tight bond or uh, even some E6000. Although I'm not real sure this is one that would work really well outside because I was actually just thinking about the plaster. And even if I clear coat this a lot, I'm not sure exactly how it would hold up outside. So maybe this would be one just for inside. Um, and then that roof or that um, light cover, I just set over the top of that. Now you could glue this on with some E6000. I didn't because it's kind of heavy and it holds on really well. And then the last item that I'm going to make is just a little candy type dish uh, from a can. So I just took this medium sized coffee can and I had this trim here. Uh, I think I picked this up in this, at an estate sale. And I'm just going to glue it around the top. I started to use um, some glue trim from those molds. I just couldn't get the look to look right. And that's why there's already some glue here. I just decided to glue um, this trim all the way around the top and the bottom. And then once I finished that, then I took it outside and I gave it a good coat of black spray paint. And I think I just used matte finish black, uh, but it, that really doesn't matter because the only reason that I did the black was so that I would have a good base coat. I'm going to be painting over the top of it anyway. So again, I just took this trim all the way around the top and the bottom, and then I took it outside and sprayed it inside and out with the black. And I also had this little metal piece, and I don't know if it was the base to something or what, but I had that in my stash, and it fit perfectly on the top of that. So I also painted that black. But first, I added a knob to the top. And that's just a drawer pull, and I glued it to the top of this and let it dry well again. E6000 would be the better choice here, but I had tight bond. So I had to let that dry for a while before I could spray paint it. So I actually made a mistake. I didn't spray paint this yet. I actually took some glue and just drew some designs all over it. And I just did some little swirls and some dots. And there's another video that I recently did where I added this finish to uh, some Christmas trees. Uh, but I'm just going to do it on this can because I want to, I don't want to see the ridges in the can. I want to uh, make this where you have no idea that this is a can underneath unless you look on the inside. So I went over the whole thing with just some little swirls and dots and I'm just freehanding all of this. And then once it dried, I took some thin aluminum foil and went over the whole thing. So I just cut a strip to fit the height of this can. And then I, I took some tight bond glue and glued it all over the top of this. And I had to piece a little piece because this sheet wasn't long enough. And um, so I rubbed this all over it. And again, then I pieced that last piece 
And as you can see, that takes away from the look of the can and it just gives me some, uh, some dimension and some raised design. And then once this was dry, then I took it outside and spray painted it. And then I let that dry and, um, and then I'm gonna go over this with a metallic finish. So here is where I use the iron paint and again, I end up not liking the iron look. Uh, I guess it's not so much that I didn't like the iron look, but I couldn't get the patina to show up on the iron. So I, after I had painted it that color and didn't like it, then I took some of the bronze color and just did a very light coat over the top of it. So you still, still would see some of that iron but you would have that uh, bronze paint over the top of it. And again, this is the iron, uh, but it just, I've done, I've used the iron a couple of times and could not get the patina to come up on it. So I really don't know what, why that is, but it just doesn't work for me. If you guys have tried it and it works, let me know what you do, but it, it just doesn't work for me. So again, I ended up going over it with, with the bronze and then got the right finish. And as you can see here, I'm doing a very light coat. I don't worry about full coverage on it. And I didn't put a stand on this on a stand. This is just one that I had done in a metallic finish. So I just used it to display it with. But I love the look of this. I think this one turned out really good. And I don't think you can tell at all that this one is a can. And that was what I was going for here. Just wanted it to look like an old metal canister. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening. And God bless you and your family.